Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about this kind of wooden text board setup which I was inspired several years ago. I no longer remember the reference. If you know who designed this at the most beginning, uh, please comment it below. It will be very much appreciated. So let's just start. So here we in Blender. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. Firstly, we are going to talk about the principle. So this is a very basic setup. I have this kind of curve linear, which is basically just a curve line plus resemble curve plus many other uh, many other math functions to control these kind of parameters. Another uh, is the curve points per view, which is basically just the preview the curve points. And it's also very simple, just the curve of two points plus some options to change the radius so that you can visualize that better in the viewport. It's kind of very basic. And here we have a deleted geometry based on the index. So by manipulating this index, we can see there is a particular vertex being eliminated. But the problem here that you need to realize is you eliminate the point, but the curve is still connected to each other. That's the major problem of this deleted geometry in curve. So what if we would like to delete some points on the curve while separating them into multiple? The idea is very simple. You just uh, to do this kind of curve to mesh so that you are deleting a single vertex and the vertex is disappeared but the mesh are separated uh, but later we want to bevel the curve so that to give some tube like structure or thickness just like a skin modifier but uh, we do not have the curve anymore because we're having the mesh so we again use the uh, mesh to curve node to recover the curve. So now we can use the bevel curve to give some thickness. Okay. So this is kind of a basic idea. And uh, every time you do this kind of setup, you have to use these three nodes. So it becomes another preset, which is called a curve split. So this is the basic principle of what we are going to do today. Uh, so let's start with a new node tree and uh, do our wooden uh, text board. So let's start with curve linear. I think this is probably the most common preset I have used and I'm going to duplicate that and put the first one into the y-axis so we have this kind of straight line on y-axis so that we can instance a x curve on the y-axis and then we just increase some sizes uh, to cover a larger area Okay, and uh, next uh, we are going to realize the instance because eventually we're going to evaluate every single vertex on this kind of curves and for now let's take a curve point preview just like we've done earlier so that I can visualize the amount of vertices I actually have on this curve we need a kind of dense geometry for evaluation and the next is to take a kind of text object so string to curves we are outputting a kind of curve instances and let's type in blender or any kind of text you want so let's the center and the middle and the fill curve so that we turn curve instances into a mesh and we are going to do the solidify to give it kind of volume this is solidify node is basically just the extrude the mesh up and down so that to give it kind of volume uh, for evaluation is inside the volume. I've discussed this is inside the volume node in the past, uh, which is basically recast node, uh, so that by determining if the ray is hitting the geometry, we can decide if this point is inside the volume or not. Okay. Since we are evaluating this uh, text uh, object, we just uh, plug this target geometry into the geometry and then we're deleting all these points using curve split as we have discussed earlier so if it's not inside the volume then we're going to delete that so now if we visualize this curve split we will realize there's actually no curves because it says instance in input geometry are ignored in this error message uh, 
we see that earlier this string to curve is output in the instances instead of mesh for evaluation so we also need to do a realize instance now we can see the curves and their uh, most of the points are deleted the rest is kind of the para parameters that uh, we may want to increase the amount of resolutions and the count so we can see some text another issue I find out is uh, for this kind of field curve and solidifier or whatever stuff for the evaluation uh, ungon is better than triangles so we take these triangles and uh, let's try to see uh, the results and the solidify results the volumes also uh, increase the amount of accuracy of evaluation and now if we try look at the triangles and ungons seems like a triangle is having certain problems but the ungon will give you a kind of perfect results so yes this is yet if we take this uh, bevel curve so now we this is kind of too large we can uh, there are several things we can do one is the uh, value position to decrease the amount of vertex uh, the radius so let exponent 2 so now we have all these kind of lines and uh, by default this bevel curve is giving a kind of tube structure but you can use the custom bevel so again we're using this curve linear so now this is a kind of a plane, right? And the, the rest is really the parameter controls that you can decrease the amount of count to make everything thicker. Uh, these are something that you can potentially do. It's, everything is optional. The reason we're using curve instead of a plane is we want to know the start and the end of this curve so that you can set the position and take a combine XYZ of spline parameter of factor. So now if you plug in the offset, you can see they actually jump into the sky. So here we can take a remap 0 to 1. And we're also going to remap with kind of float curve. So first we decrease it. So now we have this kind of tilting effect. And then we can decide the amount of tilting with this remap 0 to 1 and this float curve. And then we can increase the resolution by just increasing the count so to smooth that out. If you want to add some um, Variance because now everyone is elevated or tilted at the same level So you just add a kind of randomness We can type in 0 0.06 And into the value Then immediately you can see this kind of jaggedness because we want a different random value for every curve instead of every uh, vertex index so in this case, we are taking this spline info, uh, which is basically just an index on the interpolated domain in the spline domain. Okay. So into this custom ID, so we get some reference, uh, the, the, the not reference, the, the difference, yes, the variation. What if you want uh, some thickness of this curve? Instead of using curve linear, actually using, you can use the quadrilateral, which is basically a box, a curve box. So we can plug that into a custom curve, a custom bevel. So we get some thickness. But you may also not like it because it's uh, the shading goes very weird, which you can fix by set shade smooth by disabling it. Uh, it does not really matter. Also, you can use the fillet curve if you really want to bevel some hard edges. So you can bevel that. So these are just the uh, optional things that you can potentially do. But that's basically the idea. You can, you can fill the caps as well. So 
yes, basically this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Oh, actually, no. Uh, I haven't really finished. <laughs> I almost forgot. I want to talk about the material because now uh, the material is basically using the UV map of curve. I've discussed this idea in the past, so it's not really a difficult thing. But the issue is that if you try to store an named attribute, let's just store the vector. Uh, take UV map or UV, whatever name works. And then we can set a material. Maybe set after set shade smooth. I don't think it actually matters, but anyway. So we add a material. So this is material. And if we look at this material preview, and uh, let's take a look with the shader editor. Shader editor. Let's use a texture. Uh, check. Checker texture, yes. And we're going to use the attribute UV into the vector. So now there are several problems that you can potentially see. One is uh, the UV is being stretched because it's using this kind of curve using a uh, curve UV is using the spline parameter, which is giving zero to one for every curve. So you can use a lens to generate that. And the lens looks kind of pretty long. You can just uh, vector mask it. You can, mask, uh, you can vector mask inside the shader or you can vector mask inside the geometry nodes. I think a uh, vector mask in geometry nodes is a better result. So you multiply. So now everything is kind of acceptable scale. It will not be stretched. But the second problem is that every curve is using the same UV. So if you're using a texture, any kind of texture, wooden texture, metal texture, it will just repeat itself. There's no variation. So how can I actually add a variation for every different kind of uh, pieces? So again, we add a vector mass, and this time we just add a kind of random value. Does not really matter what kind of random value you add, but you plug it into it, and you will see the jaggedness again. This is the same reason as we have done previously with this randomness in the elevation. So here we need to capture attribute because we need to capture the curve index because when we build the curve it's a mesh there is no spline info so we plug this spline info capture it and then input that again so now there should be some variances in the UV as you can see, they aren't really repeating themselves. And you can change the seed. And basically, that's the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.